Hi there. It's another video of me penciling in Clip Studio. So it's digital penciling and, you know, still getting used to, but getting very comfortable with. And I really like the way Clip Studio works. I think this is the first page where I ended up pushing the amount of resources it used on my system. Uh, so there are some places where it started lagging at the end because the file got quite big. That's partially because I was working at a very high resolution. This is the last page of A Crowning for Lessons. That's a story I'm doing for MindIgen. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the rest of the work will be salvaged by uh, FixedDrive.ca, the, the data recovery agency that I'm, I'm using to save my work. But I'm keep working uh, to finish this story anyway, just assuming hopefully it will all be salvaged and I will be able to move forward with Mind Engine, my next anthology project. And I think I'm going to be doing a lot of it digitally in Clip Studio now. Um, I have to figure out how to do the painting, but I'll get to that next. So for now, for this story, it's just black and white line work and penciling that I have to use it for. And that's uh, some of the easiest stuff from what I can tell to do. So that's what I'm doing. Here I'm, uh, you're mostly going to see me working on developing this sort of tree-like structure. Very quick gestural pencil line for a lot of it. I ended up cropping it afterwards, which just because I wanted to go a more dramatic angle, but initially just sort of uh, drew it the way it was coming out of me. That's a nice feature of digital work that you can, if you make remember to do it on layers, you can resize and change things and make it fit your composition uh, without uh, having to cramp your style in terms of what you draw in the moment as much, because it can all get tweaked a little bit. One of the things that I often talk about, so I had a, a rough uh, for this page that you can kind of see at the beginning. Uh, it was just the tree shape. That was mostly just for composition and, and ended up changing the composition in this particular page's case. Uh, but in general, the thumbnail, I'm just sort of blocking out the gross proportions. At this stage, I'm trying to troubleshoot the drawing without getting into the fine rendering too much. So it might seem a little bit uh, detailed when we get to the end of it, but really I'm keeping it pretty loose. And I'm just trying to figure out the structure of the, in this case, the tree and um, any figures that I'm going to add to it and background. This, this particular one won't have much of a background because it's going to be an upshot with a sky. So it'll be fairly simple in that regard. It's just a mid ground and extreme foreground with two figures running away towards us, away from the tree. So that's at this stage what I'm doing is not trying to make it pretty, but I'm trying to get the anatomy and the posing, or in the case of the tree here, uh, the branching and then afterwards the, the the blossoms that will be coming off the branches on another layer i'll render those very roughly uh the final version will be a, a more careful pattern work but I'll do it really rough i also found a cool splatter effect that'll be great for the spores releasing from the flowers of this thing yeah i guess so it's, it's mostly what i'm getting at is that at the penciling stage you want to compartmentalize a little bit and you know, making comics is a, a big job and drawing pages is a pretty big job. And the best way to handle it is to break it up in these smaller tasks. So the layout and flow stage is a separate task. You're not worrying about good drawings then. You're just trying to think about the gross proportions and layout and design and the way the page reads. And then when you move to the penciling, you're, you're solving the larger problems of posing and the anatomy and the perspective and the branching patterns and trying to think about the shapes and the forms a little bit. Uh, you might start thinking about lighting a little. I don't really do that much in this one, but often I do when I'm doing the pencils. I'll do a little bit of just rough hatchy shading to indicate and think out some of the lighting. And in some ways I kind of am. You'll see me around the branches doing stuff that's figuring out how the roundness of the trunk is going to look, uh, just in very loose terms. Uh, the next stage, the inking for this, it'll be just sort of uh, doing detail work and cleanup contour, and that's when I'm going to worry about the lines being nice and when I want to make everything look good. Uh, but before that would be premature, and I'd be putting in too much work. So the goal with uh, penciling is, you know, not to take it too far, leave that for the, f the finish and the inking, uh, but to solve all of the, the, the general underlining structural problems so that I can then render uh, very freely. And by compartmentalizing those problems into separate small tasks, I make the overall job of doing the page more expedient and easier to think about. And it requires a little bit of, you know, executive direction of your attention. Exec by executive, I mean like executive function, uh, the, the neurological phenomenon of being able to draw your attention to a thing. That can be challenging for some, especially if they have ADHD or something. The part of the trick of, of learning and also of doing large jobs and work like this is not to approach the work as a problem, 
And so like the whole compartmentalizing and doing in smaller pieces, not having to think about too much stuff and juggle too many things is hard, how you make it a little easier for yourself to do that. And then you have another, the question of mindset because we'll, be, we'll naturally be avoidant of things that are a problem or give us anxiety. Like I haven't got a lot of drawing done recently and a lot of that has to do not with the work itself but other anxieties I've been having with just the cumulative effects of the COVID and then my hard drive crashing recently this week and just stuff you know on my mind that gets in the way of focusing on the work. And you have to learn to manage that. But in the moment when you're drawing, once you're able to get into that drawing zone, the best way to achieve the flow state is to simplify the problems in your mind. And so when I'm doing the penciling, I've simplified it down to just those structural things, but not pretty lines. And I hopefully already solved all the compositional problems, but I'm always open to revising and tweaking things as I do at the end of this. And then when it comes to the inking, that I'm just thinking about rendering and the cleanness of the line and what's the line communicating and using line weight and using pattern and creating values and doing the polishing on the thing. And by s isolating those tasks that way, I can make it more meditative and simpler and thus more pleasant. And then just the mindset question of relating it to, yes, it's a lot of stuff to do, but if I don't make it too complicated and too, too mentally stressful, then it can be pleasant work. And pleasant work f frequently doesn't feel like work. Um, I was saying on a Facebook thread recently, someone was asking about, you know, do you think it took talent to accomplish what you have or was it just practice? I have a very low opinion of the concept, of the supernatural concept of talent, of some gift that you're given. Uh, some people have aptitudes, and if we want to call that talent, that's fine. But mostly what we have is do you want a thing bad enough and then the repetition and practice to refine a skill and the thing is if that process is enjoyable enough it doesn't feel like work and then i think that gives rise to a lot of people who just think well i had a talent because they don't feel like they worked for it and a lot of us are raised with this notion that if you don't work for it it's not really work if it's if it's not unpleasant it's not really work that's where i'm going with that it's that it's that it, if it's enjoyable all those hours you spend getting better at and refining your skill are more of a gift in, a, in play and joy, and they can be, even when it's a lot. And if it feels like that, then some people don't recognize that that was work and they want to just call it, well, you know, I just can do this thing. I'm just able. It wasn't effortful. Well, it was, but you don't recognize it because you don't recognize that pleasant effort as work. So that's sort of a couple of different questions being answered in one go there in that why I'm, I, I break up the work into tasks like this. I mean, it's also uh, a long-standing tradition in comics and illustration, but I think the, mo the reasons for that are reflected in the secondary aspect of what I'm talking about, which is the drive and motive and what keeps you doing it. And especially with something like comics, which is a, there's a lot of work in, in making a comic, uh, doing many pages and generating all this content that goes into a story that's more than a few pages long. And that's how you keep yourself doing it. Passion won't keep you at the desk in the long run when it takes months or even years to finish a book. You have to have a bit of a tenacious stick to itness, and the best thing to encourage that tenaciousness is to enjoy the process, even when it's tedious and long-winded. So those are my two bits. This is going to wrap up soon. And uh, don't forget that I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Salgun. And if you can pledge for two bucks a month, you read all my comics and help me make more of those. If you pledge for five, I'll do your social media profile picture and portrait regularly. And, and ten, you can be a student and I'll give you feedback and help you develop the grit and passion and pleasure in your work to get things done. So keep drawing. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you around the internet. Oh, by the way, almost at 10,000 subscribers here. So hey, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe and hit the bell. That way more people will watch my videos and, and I'll actually maybe make some bucks on the ad bucks or something, or, you know, just go pledge patreon.com slash salgood and help support my work. If you're still watching, thank you very much and see you around the internets.